All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Fellowship Church in White Plains, Maryland. I'm glad to have you with us. Glad to have you in the church tonight and online. And we just rejoice before the Father tonight. Thank you, Father. Let's just uh, let's bow our hearts and, and seek the Lord in prayer. God, right now, we just ask you to wash over us, Father. Wash over us with the blood of Jesus, with the water of baptism, and renew us, Lord God, right now. Father, we lay down every everything that we've been doing during the day, Lord God, and we just set aside this time for you, O oh God. You are worthy, Lord, of all our attention and all our praise, Lord. So we give you all the glory, Father. Thank you, Lord God. And we could sing loud tonight. That's right. Amen. So something about it. So when I'm up here by myself, I, I forget I need to sing loud sometimes. So you guys can help me out. But bless the Lord. It uh, doesn't matter to God, but <laughs> probably helpful for other people. So bless the Lord. But uh, we just thank you, Father. And uh, thank you for preparing our hearts right now. Thank you, Father. As Paul, Paul prayed. I pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened so that you could see God and that you could know him better. Let's lift up a prayer to God. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, I want to see you, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. High and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. As we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Say that one more time. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Oh, God, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, I want to see you, oh, see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. To pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. 
We sing holy, 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 holy. You are holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. I'll see you high. See you high and lift it up. Shining in the light of your glory, you pour out your power and love as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. See you high and lift it up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Come open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See one more time. Holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. You are holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let your saints declare your works, your mighty praise. For great are your works, O God. Great is your faithfulness unto us, O God, and unto your word, O Lord. As we turn our eyes to you, O God. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your day on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Jesus. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Oh, you did. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. 
from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your day on high. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. All will sing how great. How great is our God. Oh, sing. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will sing. How great. How great is our God. You're the name above all names, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing, how great is our God. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing, how great is our God. Oh, how great is our God, how great is our God. You came, you came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. How great is your name, O oh God. Let your mighty works be declared from generation to generation and from one end of the earth to the other and from the rising of the sun till its setting of the sun, Lord. How great is your name. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will sing how great. How great is our God. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. And you can lift up a clap. Amen. Or a shout. That's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. I'm going to give you all the praise and glory tonight, Father. God, our, our hearts, uh, we want to honor you tonight, Father. Lord, let that joy rise in our hearts right now. We just delight to declare the praises of him who always was and who is and who is to come and who came to redeem the perishing and to save that which was lost, to do what no one else could. With man, this was impossible, but with you, all things are possible. And you said that specifically when, when you were asked, who then can be saved? Well, with God, it's possible. And you did it. So we declare your mighty works, O God, that you alone are the Savior of men, of mankind. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Are you ready? Bless the Lord. It's a good time now to enter into our time of prayer. And uh, Mark, go ahead and come up. Yep, I heard that click, click, thump, thump. Praise the Lord. I'm Mark, and I've got 15 minutes to give you a testimony, read a couple scriptures, and go through a 50-name prayer list. So let's get started. Glory to God. I am so glad he's in my life. I didn't tell you last week, 
December 3rd, 35 years ago, I took my last drink of drug because God delivered me. And I shared that on Facebook. And, you know, I get some comments. Oh, that's such a great thing that you did. And it's so hard to do. It's impossible to do on your own. Yeah, any of you are out there in bondage to an addiction, give it to God. Because if he could have, if he could have gotten this individual off of drugs and alcohol, alcohol was my drug of choice, long story short. Um, and I had some half meant measures of commitments. You know, Lord, I really want to get sober. I really want to get straight. And, and I did some, uh, I don't know, impressions in front of some judges, you know. And I got some hands slapped by the judge kind of thing. But the night I went out and got DWI number five and DWI number six in two separate counties on the same night, you could say that God looked down from heaven and said, Mark, you know, enough is enough. And, and, and it's time that we made a change. And okay, so I got my first 13 months of sobriety in a state prison. God knew what this individual needed. And um, glory to God. And, and I left two daughters at home with my parents to care for while I was in prison. Um, but God in his mercy and his grace gave me the opportunity to pick back up my responsibility as a parent, as a dad. And it's like handing the football to the running back. I've been running with it ever since, thanking God every day. And again, it's all glory to God. And the first week that I was in jail, it's not like I had any desire, but I remember one day in the cell, I was waiting to be transported to the um, correctional, to correction, the, the facilities that um, the Maryland prison system, they would figure out you know, where I was going to spend my time. But I was sitting in the county jail up in Marlboro waiting to be transported, and it was one afternoon, I was laying in my bunk in a cell that I was sharing with one other individual, and I laid on my bunk, and I could actually taste in my mouth the cheap whiskey that I was used to drinking. I think it was Canadian mist, whatever. It's not like I was having a desire, I wasn't having DTs, but that anyway, that was the last sense of any desire, of any, I haven't had any kind of any desire to be high, inebriated, drunk of any way, shape, or form since then. And by the grace of God, if God can do it for me, he can do it for you. And it is God who did it. It wasn't me. I mean, yeah, you know, I was seeking God and I was seeking redemption and freedom and from and all that kind of thing. And I was willing to be redeemed. You got to be willing and ready. If, if you're tired of being tired and sick, come to Jesus. He can set you free. Um, okay, before I jump into this 50 name list, I'm going I'm to give you a couple of scriptures pertaining to prayer, and I still have 12 minutes. Isaiah 55, 11, God's word says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Back in Isaiah 43, 26, God says, Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. I'm saying... That's saying, God says, remind me what I told you. Remind me of my word. Pray my word. Uh, James 4, 2, James says, you have not because you ask not. Jesus said in Matthew 21, whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. And lastly, Ephesians 6, 6, 10 says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The apostle Paul said, when I am weak, then I am strong because I'm taking on his strength. You're trying to bite your fingernails and you're trying to white knuckle your way into sobriety and getting clean. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. So I had to get into our prayer list. I got 11 minutes before I had to hand the podium over to Pastor Marvin, who's got a sensational, amazing teaching on the Holy Spirit. So I got to make room for that. But Heavenly Father, we're going to come to you in prayer, dear Lord. Um, these names, although we read them again Wednesday to Wednesday, um, you have heard our prayer. You, 
you have you have begun to answer prayer. Some prayers are answered instantaneously. Some are answered incrementally. Healing sometimes take time. Sometimes right away. Sometimes we're praying for relationships, marriages that are going the long distance of 30, 50, 60 years. You know, you got to pray your way through. Um, we're praying for those who are we're mindful now who are yet to give their lives to Jesus Christ and to surrender to him. And um, those who are in need of housing, those who are in need of medical maintenance, those who are ill, those who need physical healing, mental healing, and spiritual healing. Dear Lord, we cry out to you. We're not begging, Lord, because we are your children, and we know you call us. You have directed and commanded us to come to you in prayer. And we thank you, Lord, and we obediently come to you. We're not your beggars. We are your children. And we humbly come to you with this prayer list, starting with uh, Garnett Anderson and her son, Brian, uh, Cheryl and Angelo Farrer, the Larkin family, Melissa Seacrest, Debbie Biller, Mike Morris, Ken and Lorraine Mahan, Ella Mason, and Eva Mason, brother and sister, Dale Hayes, Maddie Anderson, Terry Apperson, Linda Mendora, Ashley Enstrom and her son Aiden, Kristen Stockman, Aiden Sweeney, Jerry and Linda Muchel, Joey and Jerry, Josh Bosman, praise the Lord, Del Delia Shantree no longer has cancer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jean Matthew. Kathy Saul is doing good. Excellent. Excellent, says Pastor. Dick Clone. Michelle Sullivan. Kim Belusi. Tom Watson. James Dorsey. Doris Mattingly Lama. Caleb Bailey. And I always like to take time here. Lord, we're praying for all those who are incarcerated. If they're in jails, prisons, rehabs, Lord, we pray your mercy. We pray your comfort. You promised us that your Holy Spirit would comfort. We pray, Lord, that you go into those institutions and th those people, Lord, are homesick and they're lonely and they, their, their hope is, is dim. We pray you brighten them up. And even, Lord, that by your mercy they can come home earlier than their sentence scene. James Sherbert. Donna Brown, Jesse Gilroy, Linda Grady, Brenda Boyd, Otis Field, Robin McDonough, Carol DeHaven, DeHaven, Becky Cheney, second half of our, second half of our list. Um, and at the top, there is salvation prayer request for Timothy Towson, Pickerel and Hawkin families, Matthew Knight, um, Erica and Isabella, John, Wainley, Kathy L., and Bob A., and Pastor Penciled in Bunny, and let's see, Leonard Blocker, Carolyn Beeman, who has had uh, exceptional di difficulty in her breathing. We're praying for Kimberly Harris, Betty Stepp, the Kocheski family. Charles and the Newman family, Dory Hardesty now with COVID, with many other ailments, and we do pray for your full and complete healing on Dory Hardesty from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet, all of her physical body, her mind, and her spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for comforting her as you're in the process of healing her. Lord, if you might even heal her completely tonight. Stephen Roberts, Ginger. And A.J. Conigan, Harry, and Roxana, I'm sorry, Roxanne Burgers, Brenda Greer, Rose Younger, Jim Bice Sr., Robert Cole, and Marissa Crown, Brandon Baldwin, Katina Mattingly, Maria O'Connor, Joseph, comma, Kelly and family, Maria Jones, and son Chuck Jones. Joseph Owens, Greg Gibson, 
Tom Flaherty, pastor's dear wife, Donna Harris. Um, thank you and praise your Lord for her healing and strengthening her body that she'll not have similar uh, injuries again. Paul Mattingly, Helen Cooper, Elton Bowie, Cheryl Krelling, Jeremy and Amy Clemmy, Vincent Janes Jr. and family, Savannah Hardesty, Al and Mary Jane Mills, Pastor Gary Schneider, Pam Hooper, Jeremy and Cass Heath, Ica Remo, the Centucci family, and Renee Miller, Pastor says she had a surgery, but she is doing quite well. And some things that he penned down at the bottom of the page, I'm gonna let him add when he comes up to the, to the podium. And we're also praying for those who are in the military, Israel Remo, Tim Harmon, Jacob Houston, Ashley Baldo, Billy Heath, Anthony Baldo, Charles Burke, and Brandon Hardesty. Father, we come to you in prayer. Lord, we would uh, love to slow down and take the time to just sit here and be in fellowship with you till midnight, but we are um, we have limited amount of time that we can be here this evening, and we come in reverence, Father, is what I'm trying to say. Um, we do love you and honor you, give you honor and glory, which is due to you, and you share your glory with none other. Jesus, you said that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by you, and no one comes to the Father, and no one comes to you unless the Father draws him. Thank you, Father, for drawing us. Thank you for saving us and for eternal life. Father, I do cry out to you for those who are in need of mental strength, of the joy of the Lord. Lord, those, I'm, I'm thinking of someone who um, hasn't known joy for some months now, who has been suffering depression and sadness. Lord, I, I, I beseech you to make the turnaround even now as we speak. I thank you and praise you for doing that in Jesus' name. Pastor. Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Is anybody enjoying the rain? Well, it's been a great week. I told you all this past Sunday, my daughter and I, my great great grandson and I were went into. Uh, um, <clears throat> Dunkin' Donuts. And before we go into Dunkin' Donuts, we always pray. I say, Lord, you know, he says, pray without ceasing. And I've taken him at his word. And so anytime I go into Dunkin' Donuts or McDonald's or all those high-class places, I always pray, Lord, when I get in that line, don't let anybody be in front of me. And it's amazing how it works. It's amazing. You pray for it. I mean, usually, sometimes a at the Dunkin' Donuts, there's lines all the way around the building. So I was praying, and uh, my gr great grandson and I, and he just started praying, which has been a real joy. And uh, we prayed, there was nobody in the line, but when we got up to the uh, window, I've been preparing my message from last Sunday. And th my last point, that was where we were looking at the closing life of Paul, and uh, we were looking at uh, second, uh, uh, Timothy 4, where Paul said, I fought a good fight. No, no, I'm sorry, let me back up. He said, preach the word. That was point number one. Be instant, in season and out of season. Be ready. And uh, I forget my third point, but my fourth point, I couldn't figure out what to preach. And it hit me at 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, uh, Paul said, I fought a good fight. And I thought, you know, the truth is, uh, Steve, this is a good fight. 
It's a good fight. It's not a bad fight. I read a story the other day about these three hoodlums jumped up, jumped on a bus, and uh, and uh, they went to the back of the bus. There was just those three and a, a man in the back of the bus, and they started picking on him, but they didn't realize how big he was, and and they acted like they were going to try to rob him. So he stood up, and the three realized how big he was, and he handed all three of them a car, and he said, I have a gym. He said, why don't you all come over and, and come to my gym sometime? And his name was Joe Lewis. <laughs> Joe Lewis was the, the world champion, I think, boxer from 1937 to like 19 whatever, uh, 12 years. And then he was considered the best of all time by several uh, uh, different outfits that were into that. But so uh, I've, I fought a good fight, and it has been such a joy for me. And when we see somebody's life changed, there's nothing like it. Do you mind if I pick on you, uh, Marissa? How long have you been clean? Two months and a week. And a week. Praise the Lord. Amen. And her mom uh, has been clean how long? A year and two months. A year and two months. And your stepdad, a year and two months. A year and two months. <laughs> That's a joy. What a blessing. That's a good fight. Amen. <laughs> and the story I, I tell people a lot about your mom. My daughter challenged her to go 40 days without alcohol or drugs. And she took the challenge. And on the 39th day, she had a cyst on her ovary, and the pain was unbearable, she said. And I, 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 I was think I was picking her up for church, and I went over to the house, and she was laying on the floor. So I called 911, and they came and picked her up. But I'll never forget, it was the 39th day. She had one more day to get to 40. And they put her in the ambulance, and I'm standing outside the ambulance door waiting to hear what hospital they were going to take her to. And I could hear the med, medic, you know, dealing with her. And he said, ma'am, I have meds here that will take this pain away. And she said, let me tell you, she said, I've had three children. There's one of them. She said, I've had three children. I know what pain is. I don't want any meds. She said, uh, and she said to him, I think she said she used to be in the bad and the drugs. So the blessing is. That night in the hospital, the pain left her, and it's not come back since. Yeah. Amen. Well, anyway, so we pull into the uh, Dunkin' Donuts, and I love to give out tracks. And I pulled out a track, and I gave it to the lady. And she said, I'm not religious. And, and very seldom do I find somebody that won't take a track. <clears throat> I said, well, you may not be now. I said, but one day you will be. One day when you find out that the Bible is the truth and there is a heaven and there is a hell, you'll wish you had picked up that Bible and started reading it. And, uh, and I think she was shocked. And I was shocked that I said it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but um, I left her with, uh, I know she was thinking. Last night I went into uh, Bob Evans and I gave this lady, destiny of all names, a track right up the street here. And uh, uh, it touched my heart because I gave her my testimony of losing four kids and the Lord changed my life and everything. And, and uh, she was so choked up that I lost four children. Somewhere in her life she must have uh, uh, lost a member on her family or something. But uh, she promised me she was going to sit down, drink a cup of coffee and read that track. And so that was, it's a, it's a good fight. We can have fun out here. Can I get an amen? Tim Headings is going to preach this Sunday. And uh, he came to my house Tuesday Night Live years ago. Do you know that name? No, Rich knows him. Oh, yeah, Rich knows him. He's crazy. And uh, he grew up in church. And so uh, I, after the Bible study, I said, Tim, are you sure you, if you die today, you go to heaven? He said, well, nobody can be for sure. I said, no, let me show you some verses. So I went through some Romans Road, and he said, man, 
I didn't know that you could know for sure. And were you there back in those days? And uh, he, uh, I'll never forget, we were on our knees praying, and he asked the Lord to forgive him and save him. And uh, all of a sudden, he jumped up and he said, this thing is real. I mean, it finally connected with him. And I'm telling you what, he used to work for me for a while. And uh, he would go into, uh, I would call him, I'd say, where's Tim at? I would call him, and he'd be preaching somewhere. I mean, he would go in his pickup truck and pull into a shopping center and just get in his pickup truck bed and start preaching. That takes a lot of guts. Can I get an amen? I called his mom one day. I said, where's Tim at? She said, well, he just got thrown out of Walmart. She said, but now he's in the Walmart parking lot. But he is a fireball. He is a lot of fun. I'm really excited he's coming. So um, uh, I want to encourage you to fight the good fight. I want to talk to you today about a friend. I want to talk to you about God the Holy Spirit as our friend. Uh, Acts 1 8. <clears throat> Let's pray. Andy, would you lead us? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for uh, this time to open your word. We, we thank you so much for your love to uh, let to comfort us. And uh, on this side of the cross, we, uh, we don't have to deal with the Holy Spirit just coming occasionally when we accept you. Uh, he comes to live inside. Amen. Thank you, brother. Uh, Acts 1 8 says, And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And I have more power than I thought. All right. And he goes on to say, uh, After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. When I got saved, uh, I was not a church-going person, but um, months afterward, I would read about the Holy Spirit, and I remember saying, who is the Holy Spirit? Is it a, is it, a it or is it a he? Uh, I just didn't know, but then I got into John 14, 16, and I pray the Father that he shall give you another comforter. I tell you what, it's nice to have God the Holy Spirit as our comforter. Amen? Amen? He's called the comforter. How many people do I meet every day that need comfort? I had a couple call me tonight that desperately needed comfort. Uh, he's the comforter. And the Bible says, I pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, not just once in a while, forever. And he, uh, he shall give you another comforter. In the Greek, it can read another comforter just like me, like the Lord. Uh, how is he like Jesus? They both came to earth. Jesus came in a lowly manger, was born in Bethlehem, and the Holy Spirit came on the glorious day of Pentecost. Not only did both come to earth, both have become incarnate. Jesus in the body of his own, conceived by the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit in every born again believer. But many are not filled with the Spirit. But you can be. We need to empty ourselves of ourselves. They both come to do, came to do a work, the work of Jesus on earth was finished at Calvary when he cried, it is finished. The work of the Holy Spirit continues on. Both are divine, both are God, equal members of the Trinity. Remember back in Genesis, God said, let us make man in our image. The Holy Spirit is a person. Uh, he is another comforter, just like Jesus. I really like... Uh, verse 26 and 27 of John 14. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, 
He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have told you or said unto you. Again, the comforter uh, whom the Father will... We don't call on the Holy Spirit. We call on the name of the Lord Jesus. So it says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. When we call on that name, Jesus, he will automatically, just like your car is automatic, he will send the comforter, the Holy Spirit, automatically. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit never leaves a truly born-again Christian or a child of God. You say, what about Saul, the first king of Israel? Uh, the Bible says God took his spirit away from him. David said in his great sin of murder and adultery, he asked the Lord not to take the Holy Spirit from him. In the Old Testament, before Calvary, before the resurrection, before Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and went as God chose. But in the New Testament, after Calvary, after the resurrection, after the day of Pentecost, there was never one instance where God took his Holy Spirit away from a single Christian. I like first uh, Colossians 1, uh, 1, verses 26 through 27. Let me pull that up. By the way, it's a blessing to have Trish and her husband here with us tonight. Can I get an amen? amen? All right. Friends, friends of, uh, of uh, Sheila. I know it's in the Bible. All right, I found it. Galatians 1, 26 and 27 says... Even the mystery which hath been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches and the glory uh, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus said he'd send another comforter, that he would abide with us forever. Paul said in Colossians, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Once the Holy Spirit enters in uh, at the new birth, he never leaves that person. Are you born again? Are you in YouTube land born again? Romans 8, 9 says, uh, And now if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, referring to the Holy Spirit, he is none of his. There are days you may not feel saved, but your feelings are not facts. Can I get an amen? Amen. It's like suppose uh, uh, Mark here. No, not Mark. Let me take that back. <laughs> suppose Sheila here. Uh, suppose Rich got up one morning and said to Sheila, you know, I just don't feel married today. Now, I can say that because Donna and I got married at the Justice of the Peace. And it was so fast. Um, uh, we signed a couple things, and, and the guy said to me, you may kiss your bride. I said, where is she? I mean, it, was, it wasn't like he went through anything. He just said, sign this paper, kiss her. And uh, so I always kid my wife. I say, I'm not really sure we're married. But suppose uh, Rich got up and said to uh, Sheila, I, I don't feel married today. And then when he wakes up in the hospital a few days later with a black eye, teeth missing, his arm in a sling, he will realize his feelings are not facts. Amen? You may have the Holy Spirit, but does the Holy Spirit have you? Does he possess you? Do you believe the Holy Spirit has hold of your life? Point number one today, the Holy Spirit is our friend. Ephesians 4.30 says, And grieve not the Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. 
The Holy Spirit is someone who loves you, who wouldn't, and you wouldn't grieve your best friend, would you? But we can grieve the Holy Spirit. Suppose you are um, walking in a, ma- a mall, say, and, and a total stranger walks by you and doesn't say a word to you. It doesn't bother you at all. But suppose, uh, Trish, you're walking in the mall, and there's uh, Sheila, and she sees you and walks right by you and don't say a thing. That would, that would hurt, wouldn't it? It sure would. If they walked by and didn't say a word, you'd be grieved. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. He is your friend that loves you. Now, the Bible does say that he can be resisted. Acts 7.51, Peter said, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. An example, the Holy Spirit is our guide and our teacher. Well, we can rely on him. I don't know how many times I've looked at him. Uh, in your heart, he, uh, uh, I remember years ago, I went to the altar. It's funny, Trish, we were talking about starting TNL. I remember going to the altar in our church years ago, and uh, I wanted to teach, and I had a burden for singles or young people, but uh, actually I met a young man that was not happy with a new Sunday school teacher, and he he was a a police officer, very young man at the time, but he said, he came up to me and said, Marvin, and he was crying, he said, you gotta do something. And I got a burden right then for young people. And uh, so I went to the altar and I prayed, but I didn't, and my pastor said, Marvin, why'd you go to the altar? I said, well, I prayed, and, and uh, maybe the Lord might be leading me to do a Sunday school class. But he's thinking I'm talking little kids. But I never told him what I wanted was college and career. And so uh, um, uh, the only problem I had was I couldn't teach. That was my only problem. I couldn't teach. So... Uh, studying and then we started that Bible study and how I started the Bible study was because I'm not showing you that I'm spiritual but a loudmouth woman that was in our church she came up to me and I told her well I think I'm going to start a Bible study and then I walked away from her and I thought you know what who's going to teach it so uh, uh, about four months later uh, Ruth Peacock is her name she came up to me and put her hands on her hips and said Marvin Harris when are you going to start that Bible study? Because she lived right around the corner from us. I said, in two weeks. And that was crazy. But, so we started doing a Bible study at our home. And then uh, uh, after teaching for a year or so, I thought, well, our college and career class was sewed up. So I thought, I'm going to see if I can teach like a young marriage class. So I approached my pastor and uh, he said, Marvin, let's pray about it, and let's meet in two weeks. So we did. I think he was just testing me to see if I really wanted to teach. And two weeks later, we got back together again. I want to tell you how good the Lord is. Remember, four years before, I got on my face and prayed and asked the Lord to give me college and career. But now I'm asking Pastor Fitz for uh, a marriage class. So he says to me, Marvin, the guy that's teaching college and career doesn't want to teach it anymore. He wants to teach a young marriage class. He said, well, you teach the college and career class. And I have to confess to you, I don't want to sound spiritual. I'd forgotten I'd asked the Lord to give me that class four years before. When I got back out on the car and I'm driving, I'm meditating and thinking about what we said. I said, oh, my goodness. God gave me what I asked for four years ago. And we had a time. Moving on. Um, Point number one, the Holy Spirit is our friend. Um, First, second Corinthians, the Holy Spirit likes to fellowship. That's why I love our name, fellowship. Um, Second Corinthians 13, 14, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost, Paul said, be with you all. 
Uh, this is a friend you can hang with. And God the Holy Spirit uh, likes to speak. 1 Peter 1.21 For this prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. He told Philip to go join himself to the chariot with the Ethiopian. He speaks down on the inside. Uh, an example that I think of uh, just a bad example, but uh, have you ever been maybe in the pew and, and maybe a missionary speaking and you think, man, I'm going to write him a check. And then down on the inside, maybe the Holy Spirit says, write him a check for a thousand. And then all of a sudden, I think Satan comes along and says, that's too much. Write him a check for 500. Anybody ever been there? Just me? Just me? Okay. Uh, he speaks to us down on the inside. And let me tell you, you can't outgive him. Given it shall be given unto you. Amen. When I read the word and I grasp a good Bible truth, it, it's almost like down on the inside he says, hmm, that's good, isn't it? That's good. Like Sunday morning, 4 o'clock. I fought a good fight. Man, whew, I love it. Moving on. Point number two, God the Holy Spirit wants to fill us. Ephesians 5.18 says, And be ye not drunk with wine wherein has access, but be ye filled with the Spirit. It will energize the flesh. Then, wait a minute, let me try that again. The drinking will energize the flesh, but then it will let you down. Zechariah said, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. The difference of living a life or a great life is being spirit-filled. Uh, I remember, I don't know why I wrote this down. In Franklin, Tennessee, uh, it's amazing. Uh, I was in another McDonald's. All right. And there was a lady there named Chelsea. And I handed her a gospel track. And I'll never forget her reply. She said, you know, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. I really need this now in my life. Wow. The difference of living a life or a great life is being filled with the Spirit, letting the Holy Spirit lead us. Ephesians 3.20 says, doesn't say, unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Uh, or according, let me back up. It doesn't say he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to personality or ability or education or according to who promotes you or what the fellowship or what fellowship you're in. But it does say, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Um, I told this story recently, but in April 28th, 2002, the tornado hit our house head on. And um, that morning, when I got up, we had just bought that house. It was a new house, and it was like three and a half acres, and the property the back of our property was all woods, a lot of bush and trees and different things. When we bought it in September, uh, it was there were no leaves on anything. But now, in April, you can't see anything back there. I remember my grandson went back in there, and he got lost. He was only probably three or four. And he's calling my wife. Uh, and we didn't know where he was, and so... Uh, my wife said to him, follow my voice. And he finally came out of there. But that day, April 28th, um, I said, Lord, I can't afford to have all these trees taken down back here. I can't afford it. And I really meant it. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just go back in there and, and hack some bushes and get rid of some of that stuff that was around on the ground. 
And uh, now I said he is able to do, listen to me, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, or think, or think. I was thinking it. I didn't pray and ask the Lord to remove those trees. But that evening when I got back home, the tornado hit our home, and it sat in a valley, and all the trees all the way around the house were down, pointing all the way, so it hit head on. But those trees in the back, some of them were blown clean out into the millennium, I'm telling you. Uh, uh, most of them were down. And uh, uh, that verse came to my mind, but uh, he's able to exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. Yes? <laughs> you like that part? <laughs> my wife and I went in there that night into the house after the tornado had left. And we're walking up the steps, and the whole roof is missing above us. I said, honey, this is sort of romantic, isn't it? <laughs> she didn't think it was that romantic, I will tell you that. But um, that was a crazy time. But God blessed us with that thing. He was able to do exceedingly abundantly. When I bought the house, I had no idea. It was all builder-grade material. Like the siding was cheap siding, maybe worth like maybe less than seven years. But the friend of mine that rebuilt our home, I put like the best he could buy on there. So instead of it being seven years, it was like I think 15 or 20. The roof had to be replaced. And, uh, insurance, paid for? insurance paid for everything. And you know, I always hear lay down low. That is really ridiculous. You better get running or something. Because the, the, we had a gravel driveway. And I'm telling you what, that tornado took my gravel and probably threw it out there in uh, Annapolis or somewhere. It was, it, all the windows had to be replaced. But because the windows have gas in the middle in between the panes, and they say that the, the tornado sucks the air out of the house, and, and it sucks those, the gas out of those windows. So I got all new windows. So what happened, the bottom line is, I got finished, when it was finished, I had a house worth much more and much better built than I had before the tornado hit. Can I get an amen? amen. <clears throat> Moving on. So he's able. Three times a drunk man is compared to a spirit-filled man. This is not by accident, but by design. In Acts 2, Peter says, for these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel, that it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Luke 1.15. Uh, it is said of, of John the Baptist, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Why does the Bible compare a drunk man to a spirit-filled man? A drunk man is controlled by another power. I remember Curtis Hudson, a wonderful preacher from the past. He said that he was in the he would go to the uh, fire department all the time, and he said this drunk guy came in one day with a clipboard. And he went over to the one guy and he said, what's your name? And the guy gave him his name, he wrote it down. And he went over to another guy and said, what's your name, son? And he told him, he wrote it down. And then he went up to the, the guy that was actually driving one of the uh, fire trucks. He said, what's your name? He said, and the guy said, why do you want my name? He said, because after I write them all down, I'm going to come through here and I'm going to whip all of you. And he said, well, you're not going to whip me. And he said, he started getting out of the the fire truck and he kept getting out and getting out and getting out and he looked down at the guy and the guy said hey I'm going to take you off my list <laughs> I don't know why I told you all that but I like the story Curtis Hudson oh a drunk man is controlled by another power they say that part of your brain goes to sleep uh, and I can't remember where I got that but I do believe it's true um you take a shy, timid, backward fellow and get him drunk and suddenly he's loud, probably obnoxious. 
you take a shy, timid, backward Christian who is too timid to suck his thumb and get him filled with the Spirit, and he starts talking out loud in front of crowds, and he's not even embarrassed. Ever meet anybody like that? I have. Uh, get that poor creature afraid of his own shadow and get them filled with the Spirit, and they become as bold as lions. The same Bible says, don't get drunk, also says, be ye filled with the Spirit. Listen up. If I understand the Bible, then it is just as wrong not, listen to me now, not to be filled with the Holy Spirit as it is to be drunk. Did you all catch that? It's just as wrong not to be filled. We have access. I remember my son-in-law was with a group called Jars of Clay. Some of you might know that name. And we used to, because we were family, we could get in behind stage and be with a, a lot of the singers. And uh, we always had to have that access pass. Well, we have access through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen, point number three, the last point. God, the Holy Spirit, wants us to have fruit. Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Boy, it's, I love seeing that in a person, a transformed person's life. Uh, one that maybe was filled with hate, and now they have love. And they have joy. And they have peace. This world is looking for peace. Long-suffering. Gentleness. How many times have I heard somebody say, Five months ago, if you would have said that to me, I would have whipped you. But now, they've been saved, and God the Holy Spirit's doing a work in them. Can I get an amen? amen. Uh, temperance, against such there is no law. Uh, no more, the more you are filled, the better it gets. Uh, seeing a mean person turn into a teddy bear. Seeing a Barney Fife with a lot of peace. Can I get an amen? If you're going to be filled with the Spirit, let me say this. Uh, you may ask to be filled with the Spirit. Uh, you are not filled automatically. There are three conditions to being filled. First, thirsting. Many Christians do not have the fullness of the Holy Spirit because they're not thirsty enough. Uh, you must get to the place where you say, I have to have it or I'm going to die. When I was 19, I wanted a brand new Corvette. Four on the floor. Hard top. All that stuff. I had to have it. And I was making like $1.98 an hour, to be truthful. And you know, I worked two jobs. I worked day and night, and I bought one. Uh, from Hick Chevrolet, 1965. Um, then I wrecked it, but moving on. Um, the problem was, again, I was from the poor side of town. Um, John 7, 37 says, And if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture saith, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him will receive. Do you want God's power? Uh, first, you have to have that uh, thirsty, thirsting. Second condition, believing. Again, 737, and if any man thirst, let him come, on, come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture saith, out of him, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Thirsting and believing, do you believe that he'll fill you? The third condition is asking. Luke eleven thirteen, and be ye, uh, if ye then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Uh, are you satisfied where you're at, or do you want some power? You can get it through God the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. He is our friend. He loves us. Uh, we can trust him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. 
I thank you for our friends that are here. I thank you for those watching on YouTube. If you're not saved, I would encourage you to uh, come out this Sunday and let us take the word of God and show you how to be saved and show you how your life can be uh, transformed. And we love you, Lord Jesus. And we ask all these things in your precious holy name. Amen. Amen, amen. Shake hands with somebody. Make somebody feel at home. YouTube.